two centuries ago. Uh, we still have relatively few that have, uh, the population hasn't really recovered, uh, although they're, well, across the whole world, they're now uh, maybe as many as a million, but here we have less than 100. And these guys are huge, 45 tons. Uh, I don't know how much that is in, in Volkswagen, but uh, uh, you don't want to piss them off. And these are the ones, I don't know if you've seen the photographs of uh, them going down really the great depths, and they go after the giant squids. And so if you see one of these guys close up, you'll see that they have uh, damage from fighting the squid. They'll have sort of claw marks or sucker marks. And uh, so they're sort of heroic fights way down there in the dark. And it's a really a hell of a way to make a living. As I said, the females form pods uh, to protect their young. <coughs> and in the past, uh, harpooning a uh, sperm whale uh, was done from very small boats like this, and the result was often that the uh, whale would get annoyed and, and flip the boat or smash it. And now uh, whalers have switched there on bigger boats, uh, and they've got these very high-powered cannon <coughs> harpoons, and so uh, it's not really competitive, it's just a slaughter. They, we've stopped the slaughter of them for now, uh, their question is, as the population rebuilds, some nations want to uh, uh, pick up whaling again. And like those beautiful things you saw from the uh, Hawksbill tortoise uh, turtle, uh, this is what's called scrimshaw, which is taking the teeth of the whale and uh, sort of sketching in uh, scenes, uh, pe pe things. The whalers would do this in their years of spare time. They would sketch perhaps things they saw in the countries they stopped in, or uh, things back home, or ships. And uh, the other sort of darker side for the ladies in the room is that in Victorian days, they used uh, the whale bones to make stays or corsets. Corsets? Corsets. Corsets. Uh, and the idea was that you weren't really attractive unless you had one of these and you had someone in the back, they would even put their feet up to pull them tight. And um, in some cases, they, to be really fashionable, women would break their lower ribs. And the idea was you would have a wasp waist. And uh, breathing was sort of optional. Uh, <laughs> but it was hell of a sexy to, if you were someone in the 1890s, guys would just look at this. Of course, they got really excited by seeing an ankle. So, uh, <laughs> culture does change, uh, but uh, that was one of the major, that and whale, of course it's whale oil and uh, uh, souvenirs like this were the big drivers, also whale meat, but whale oil was the big one. They would capture a whale, strip it, put the uh, meat into a big pot and boil it down until it was oil. Hawaiians, uh, knew the sperm whale, probably didn't catch them, but we don't know, but they certainly washed up. And so they were used for uh, some of their, um, in, as part of the culture, incorporating different parts of the whale uh, into necklaces. Orcas, um, they're just cool. I don't, has anyone seen an orca in the wild? Ooh, can you live to tell? No, actually they're very nice. Um, I'm not sure it's sea life park. Uh, <coughs> or sea world. They're mostly here in the winter. You don't see them usually, but if you go to Washington State or Alaska, they're relatively common. They're incredibly sophisticated. Uh, they have cultures. Uh, there may actually be a variety of species. Uh, some of them only hunt marine mammals. Some of them hunt herring. Uh, they have distinctive calls, and they stay together in groups. Although, sort of once a year, they get the groups get together and seem to socialize, and I guess there's some dating going on. <coughs> and so the maximum here is under 500. These guys will eat anything. Uh, I've seen them in Galapagos grab a sea turtle and go like this until the feet went flying off, and then they sort of like swallowing a whole oyster. Uh, they eat squid, they eat sea lions, uh, they'll eat dolphins, uh, anything, and they hunt cooperatively. There are pictures of them, uh, a couple of them, uh, going and charging an ice flow and setting up a little tsunami to wash the seal into the water. 
And if you're the seal, it's not so good, but it's, these are really bright animals. Here's one eating a seal, I guess, but anyway. <coughs> Pseudo orcas, false killer whales. They're around here, uh, and there's a very small population inshore. Uh, they're also one amazing hunters, uh, and they've got seem to have quite a culture going. Uh, they share fish with each other, uh, and have even been known to uh, share them with humans. On the other hand, they also like us to do their fishing for them, and so uh, they're known for when the line comes up, they'll just sort of help themselves to the fish, which can be annoying if you're a fisherman. Uh, and because of that habit of going after fish. Uh, they get caught a lot, a lot in our long line fishery. And so this has become a point of conflict uh, as to what we do to reduce this. Like a lot of uh, whales, they've got a lot of heavy metals, mercury, uh, pesticides and stuff uh, in their bodies. Because everything they eat uh, has a little bit of contamination. Uh, but when you're a top predator like this, you live for 50 years. Uh, the beluga whale in the St. Lawrence River in Canada one dies, it's basically a, tox, a super site, it's a toxic site. Uh, and so you have to, they have to haul them away and treat them specially because they don't want all those, that mercury and stuff uh, going into the uh, environment. Here's a uh, pseudo orca, false killer whale, eating a yellowfin tuna. Uh, for those of you who know yellowfin tuna, uh, you have to be pretty fast to catch these. And here's another. Uh, even faster fish, the mahi mahi. Let's um, say it's wahoo. Dorado. Dorado. That's, yeah, and they are just incredibly fast, and um, they live right on the surface. And these things can chase them down and grab them. So they're really a, a, an amazing animal, both culturally and in terms of, of how they make a living. Here's my favorite: uh, the nyack uh, or spinner dolphin. How many of you have seen spinners? They, they rest out uh, in some of our bays, and then at night they go out, out and, and down into the depths to feed on fish that are coming up from the depths. Uh, during the day, they're resting, and, but they'll occasionally uh, play with people. Uh, the problem is that when they don't want to play with people, uh, we really can stress them out if a lot of tourists show up and go, uh, and they're just trying to take a nap. And for those of you who do swim with them, um, I spent a couple days studying them in Costa Rica, and there's sort of an etiquette. Uh, we were some of the first ones to tow behind a boat, and the, whale, the uh, uh, spinners came in uh, and were totally unafraid of us. But occasionally we noticed some of them, we were with the females and the young, and but occasionally a male would come up, and they go, when I go, nah, 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 and that means you have a pissed dolphin in your hands. And uh, if they go in a humpback, they have these fins here, and they can look very much like shark fins. And so if, if you find a dolphin doing that, don't push your luck. Uh, I don't think there are any attacks by these, but other dolphins have become aggressive when pressed. Uh, at, at sea, they're amazing. This is in 5,000 feet of water, 50 miles off of Costa Rica. Uh, and I don't know, we don't know about what they do here. But there's this, this pod, this group, this school, and the males are on the outside, and the females and young are in the middle. And there's also tons of sex going on. Uh, but that's what they do all day. And then occasionally the, uh, the tuna come up from the bottom, and they chase the tuna, and the tuna are going after bait fish. And the tuna are going like 20, 30 miles an hour, and the dolphins are going right behind them. And there's just this magnificent slaughter of bait fish. Uh, and then the seabirds are diving, and it's one of the really the, the uh, great scenes in nature. <clears throat> yeah, here are people swimming with them. Uh, you know, it's like going to bed in your house, and suddenly a, a busload of tourists comes through. Here's a here's a Hawaiian resident, or here's a native Hawaiian. <laughs> They're very patient. Uh, you know, this is not really a, a good behavior, and if and you may have been going, eh, eh. Uh, but most of the time what they do is they go, zee. And so if you're swimming with them, the ocean is just this, zee, zee, zee. And as far as I can tell, 
these are individual calls by different dolphins saying, I'm here, I'm here. And if you're one of the males, you want to hear, and you want to be on the outside protecting, you just want to hear them from one side. If you only hear them from one side, that means you're on the outside. If you're a female or young, you want to hear them from both sides and above and below you, because that means you're in the middle of the pod. And, but it's this marvelous sound, uh, and after three hours in the water, your whole ears are going uh, Monk seal. Uh, how many of you, you must have, most of you have seen these? Uh, they're interesting because they're endangered, but they're really annoying the uh, scientists and the managers because they all live, most of them used to live in the uh, Northwest Islands. And uh, they uh, have now started moving down here. And so they run into conflicts with fishermen, <clears throat> but they'll also take over a beach. Uh, the difference between a uh, sleeping uh, monk seal and a rock is uh, all, there's almost no difference. But uh, they just, I've almost stepped on one that way, uh, which is an illegal act. Uh, but they fence off the, the, you know, tons of beach so they can, uh, the rocks can sleep uh, without disturbance. Uh, most of the time, though, they are at sea, um, and it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, what they tend to do is, is drop off along the bottom and uh, try to get away from sharks that are roaming the shore. And then they feed by down to almost a thousand feet by flipping over rocks and seeing what's under it. The trouble of the young uh, don't can't do that, so they're more likely to just be in shore uh, chasing octopus. Almost got you. Uh, problems: uh, tiger sharks. Uh, in some of the Northwest Islands, there are a couple of sharks that seem to specialize in them, and the. There have been a couple of efforts to try to shoot sharks to protect them. The trouble is you don't know which tiger shark, unless you can recognize it, just shooting sharks just doesn't work because there, there aren't that many tiger sharks, but uh, you're just you, you're likely to kill the wrong one. Much more damaging uh, is the uh, social life. There are relatively few females. There are a lot of males, and their idea of foreplay is sometimes drowning uh, the females, but they also go after the young, and they'll either bite them and try to hold them, uh, or they'll just bite them and drown them. So there's again been an effort to try to move, they, they wanted to move the young down here, uh, away from those excess of males, but folks down here, particularly fishermen, weren't too happy with that. So, and, and then they just can't shoot all the males because it's an endangered species. So we don't know what to do. Uh, here's a problem uh, that the, uh, happens with all the, they're called pinnipeds, uh, which are the, the uh, seals. And there's just so much netting and stuff, crap in the water, that they tend to get caught in them. And if, if, if you see a, a, uh, a seal caught, just call someone else. Don't try to get them free yourself, because uh, they won't understand what you're doing, and they've got incredibly razor sharp teeth. And uh, so it, it tends not to end well for anyone involved. So they are moving down here to the islands. There's not the shark population. They're not all those males. Uh, and, but there is conflict with humans. So we'll have to see what happens. Here's one of our prominent biologists in his younger days. Uh, and you can see the uh, yellow fences and the line to keep the humans <laughs> Why is there this sex imbalance in the first place? Uh, you know, I don't know. It may be, I'd have to get back to you on that, but I think it, it, may, it may be more stressful to be a female up there. Um, especially if you have all these males. You know, it's sort of like frat boys going crazy time. Uh, so, let's go to the second one. 